serene temple. This temple is the temple of Lord Vaidyanathishwara at Talakadu. Talakadu is a very important place in this entire history of Vadaya dynasty. Talakadu is a place which is reminiscent of the famous curse that Alame Lama uttered and it is such an effective curse that even till date, uh, Vadaya dynasty has not been able to get rid of. Before she jumped off from the cliff to the river, she just prayed to the Lord Vaidyanathishwara saying that if I have been a true devotee to you throughout my life, then please grant me this dying wish. And this is where she cursed in Kannada, which goes on something like Talakadu Maralakali, Malingi Maduvagali, Mysuru Doregalage Makkalagade Hogari. It translates to something like Let Talakadu be filled with sand, let Malingi be a whirlpool, and let Mysore rulers be childless. All the three curses that she uttered before she jumped off stands true till date. And this is where I want to take you on this journey. Actually, this entire uh, Talakadu is very close to Kaveri River. It's, it's unbelievable truly that the land which is so close to the river, which is supposed to be so fertile, is so barren. I'll just show you the expanses and I'll just show you the terrain here. It is very similar to a desert in Rajasthan. And how did something so close to Kaveri River turn something like this? There was a living, breathing kingdom before this curse and uh, we see a lot of temples that are submerged in sands and excavation is happening there. Archaeological Survey of India is trying to excavate every single temple here. But it's almost baffling that something that is so rich in history is, is completely submerged in sand today and that, that even now it surprises me and I can't believe it. Let me just go on and show you this entire story. I'm standing at Talkadu and uh, this is the first curse that uh, Alame Lama uttered. She said, let the entire Talkadu be submerged with sand. And if you can see behind me, this whole expanse of many acres of land of Talkadu is just submerged in sand. So let me just pan the camera across to show you exactly how this place looks. So you can see. And what you see today was not exactly how Talkadu was before. This is a very rich place. There are a lot of temples that are submerged in sand today and the Archaeological Survey of India is trying to excavate many of the temples and there are like a whole list of temples and if I have to cover that then maybe I should do another entire episode of Talakadu just to show you the kind of places around and uh, other rulers that have ruled Talakadu. So it is very evident that it was a very rich place. It was a rich place with history and culture and everything. And today what we see is a barren desert. And this is exactly after the curse that Alame Lama uttered. And she uttered this curse in order to protect her self-respect so that when the entire retinue of uh, Raja Vadeyar was approaching her, she uttered this word saying that let Talakadu be filled with sand so that because it's very difficult for one to walk in sand, you know, it's not as easy as one walking on the rock or on the cement or on the road because when you walk in the sand, it kind of holds you back. So it takes a lot of effort to walk on the sand and it really buys time for Alame Lamma to jump off from the cliff so that, uh, you know, her jewelry and her self-respect is intact. So we are sitting on a coracle now and we are having a coracle ride in the river Kaveri. I am going to the spot where uh, Alame Lama uttered the curse before she actually jumped into the river. It's called as Malangi and uh, there is a whirlpool even now. I'm not going exactly to that spot but I'm going close enough to that spot so that I could capture the exact spot where she jumped off from. Okay, so how did you... Are you scared? How are you feeling to go on this coracle ride? Uh, very relaxed as you can see. Uh, I think uh, if you really analyse, uh, you know, Talkad and many such places spread across India, there are a lot of these uh, really exotic stories buried across this land. This land has many stories to tell 
and uh, the sense that you get is that there is a lot of truth and uh, values that are actually cemented deeply into the Indian consciousness in the villages, in the hinterlands, right? Um, everybody in the city would have you believe that they are very advanced uh, technologically and they are very smart. Uh, but actually when you come to places like this you actually feel ashamed because the moral life of man is something that has been heavily compromised in today's city's life and that is why people should visit places like Talkar and others just to feel a little humbled for a moment even ever so slightly right uh, just to find out that they are much more simpler and more humbler people and uh, um, and to actually at least begin to aspire to lead such a life because today the trend is people are actually moving away from the pollution, the cities, the noise, the crime. Actually, they want to settle down in a farmhouse somewhere on the banks of this river. I mean, just think about it for a moment, right? Beautiful, a actually. Actually, can I just pan the camera and show it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this, this one, if you see on my left, this is what life is all about. And I think people are more and more realizing is you only have 50, 60 years, depending upon, uh, you know, what your lifetime is. And uh, it's all about uh, enjoying those moments. It's all about you know, reconnecting with nature, find, going back to your roots and trying to find the real meaning of life instead of sitting in a cubicle and working away on a computer. So that's just my assessment. And another interesting question actually I wanted to ask you and actually thanks to you that you have really been a very good company in my journey of becoming a YouTuber or when I told you that I want to make a series of the history. So you have come along with me. Uh, what made you come along and what made you in support me in my journey of this? So that's a really great question. I think one thing for sure is I got inspired by the topic that you chose okay. for the making of the video. Uh, you know, Vadeas, Mysore, Karnataka, Bangalore. These are subjects, especially history is a subject that is close to my heart. And I just feel that people haven't done adequate justice uh, to some of these stories. We have read about it in history books in school. But honestly, nobody gives a damn about uh, how these stories uh, uh, unraveled and what was the uh, you know significance and you know uh, the meaning behind some of these stories. And I feel Karnataka as a state has a lot to offer uh, to its citizens and to the world at large. And I feel as a citizen of this great state, it's my responsibility to bring to light some of these stories. And in doing so, I'm very happy to support you, my wife. Um, in executing this project, conceptualizing it because I'm just trying to do whatever I can in my own little way and um, obviously this is a great hobby for us and uh, we will continue this passion as we go along uh, because I think today's day and age uh, there is another version of the story that needs to be told through our eyes uh, through our minds and through our thoughts and emotions and that is what we are trying to capture here So the kind of rock that you are seeing there, that rock is exactly the spot from where Alame Lama jumped off to the river by uttering these three curses that, that stands true even till date. I am standing at the exact point uh, from where Alame Lama uttered these three famous curses that stand, uh, that stand true even till date. The first curse she said, let uh, Talkadu be filled with sand and uh, we have seen Talkadu is filled with sand and it's not the sand that you find near a river, it's the kind of sand that you find in a desert which uh, even the priest has kind of clarified to us. The second curse that she uttered was let Malingi be uh, whirlpool. So exactly if you go down, I'm just little, I'll let just see if I can fan the camera that way. But if you just go down and see, if there is a whirlpool and somebody who falls into that will not be able to come alive. Then the third curse is that let Vadeyas of Mysore be childless. Until date, every second generation has a child. And that is scientifically, it may look a little uh, strange to us in the beginning, but there is a scientific reason behind it. The first child will be an adopted child and adopted child does not belong to the royal lineage and it's a separate child from a different family. Hence, that child will have a, have a male hair. But the second generation, the child who is born to a royal family will be connected to the lineage of royal family and the second child will not have a child and that's why it will date from 1500s till now or from the time Alame Lama uttered this curse from then till now we are seeing a pattern where the second generation is not having a child while the first generation has a child. What do you feel about the place? So, 
this place uh, has a peculiar calmness about it there is a gentle yet slightly heavy breeze blowing here which kind of underlines the sadness and the solemn nature of this place uh, it's like the river bears witness to what has happened in the last 400 to 500 years um, it has washed many a tear of many a human being coming here and what happened in those days was really unfortunate and uh, in fact what uh, we had a small ritual here ourselves we actually prayed to the spirit of uh, the deceased lady the great lady who uttered the curse and uh, you know to really seek her blessings and permission to cover this place and that is part of our indian culture and tradition right uh, we obviously pay respect and homage uh, uh, before we begin any activity so that uh, the activity is conducted successfully um, so i can only say that uh, um successive uh, you know kings of from the odia dynasty have tried to address the curse in some way or form and try to pacify the spirit over here but i think the spirit may not have been pacified to this day which is why the curse the third curse still continues and many other curses that we speak of here are still very much in place so it's one of those uh, it it's, it's a blip in space time if you really think of if it from a more westernized point of view that a curse actually creates a blip in space time which becomes a signature for that place because something that is uttered out of human will then overcomes nature in a way which human beings cannot understand so it is more mind over matter and that is what this place is all about thank you so this temple that you are seeing right now was actually constructed by shri kanta datta wadeyar to repeal the curse of uh, alme lamma he constructed a temple here and he brought a statue but the statue got damaged and like we cannot worship an idol which is damaged so that's why he had to come back and put it in the same whirlpool that alme lamma jumped off from this whole story of alme lamma and her curses has been one of the most mysterious intriguing histories of karnataka not just karnataka but india and we really don't know when this curse will be overcome standing in front of malingi actually i in this place makes you very emotional the kind of emotions that you feel and how you imagine this entire you know uh, scenario unfolding in front of your eyes i mean if i really have to stand here and imagine alme lamma jumping off then you really feel so sad i mean it just feel makes you so emotional somebody you know for the sake of jewelry or for the sake of power you know really had to utter this terrible terrible curses i mean covering an entire land filled with sand and uh, the whirlpool that we see in malangi is engulfing the entire land inch by inch and maybe there will be a day when this entire village malangi will be filled with only whirlpools and uh, even till date the third curse which is the wadeyar is not having a child and it's true and it's eerily true it's bizarrely true i mean there is no reason why we we can't explain that why every second generation will not have a child but it's eerily true and you just feel those emotions when you come here how is it possible that a woman will say these things how is it possible that a woman is pushed to that extent that she wants to commit suicide by uttering these curses these are the kind of human emotions that we can't really address and we just feel it when we come to your place like this it's just uh, it's it's yeah it's like a calm before a storm i mean you you really feel the calm but you know there was a storm that happened and you carry the emotions of a storm and get you feel calm inside it's a very bizarre emotion that i'm feeling right now you know at the outset this whole episode of alame lamma and her uttering the curses it may look a little silly or it may look a little shallow from the outset but when one thinks about it seriously or gives it a very deep thought it's not really about the jewelry more than jewelry it's about the self respect of a woman who has just lost her husband she is vulnerable and at this point in time she doesn't want any man or any raja or any ruler to kind of to tell her that you know this jewelry belongs to man this is more a matter of woman self respect at stake and this woman uh, the rani alme lamma probably felt that it's better to you know commit suicide than to really be at the mercy of raja wadeyar you know, rani alme lamma really felt a sense of despair she did not know where to go what to do and, and in this utter hopelessness that she actually committed suicide and it's very sad when you think of it